Hello everyone and welcome to my Autodesk Revit tutorial. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to draw in the rebar for your L-shaped column over here. But before I begin this tutorial, I'd like you to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to share this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So I will now head to a plan view, level 1 over here. And I will draw in an L-shaped column. I've already loaded one in. If you want to know how to create a L-shaped column family in Revit, please do watch the previous video. It will be linked in the top right. So right now, I will just choose the vertical column option, choose the height option over here, and it will be ending at level 2. So I'll draw in the column right here. To draw in the rebar for our L-shaped column, select it over here. Click on the rebar button. And let's choose a 10 millimeter rebar option over here. And let's choose the buy two points option over here instead of expand to host. So choose buy two points over here. And select the M T1 tie over here. And you can see the rebar cover outline for the L shaped column over here. Select one corner and draw it out to the other corner like so and do the same hit escape twice and you can adjust where the hook will end up you can set it up like this over here uh, it seems that the hook length might be a bit too long and it might cause some rebar congestion so you might want to override the hook length over here instead of putting in 110 millimeters that's Halve it to let's say 55 or 60. Like so. And now let's draw in the vertical rebar. So select the column again. Click on the rebar button over here. And now let's choose the expand hose option. And choose perpendicular to cover over here and choose the first option here and choose near cover reference over here i'll choose a 16 millimeter rebar here and i'll just place it in the corner here like so and typically you would have about four in this corner here and typically if your l-shaped column is quite long you might have to add rebar in the middle over here like so and let's tidy it up over here so let's annotate these So let's make this 150 over here so it's almost the same in distance from the left to the right so we can just move this by three millimeters just make it 150 and drag it down and just delete this one here and mirror this right over here hold up there's no there's no line over here, so let me just draw a middle line over here. And let's mirror this in a bit. And we can try to delete these and try mirror it along the diagonal. Again, let's draw in the line. And you can also do the same for the ones up here. Select the ones over here on the left and select the mirror option over here and you can mirror it like that. So you can easily just detail one side and just mirror everything else. And now in the 3D view, let us see what we've got over here. So I'm going to select everything here and make sure to check on the visibility state. So it's now visible in the 3D view over here. And notice where the stirrups are placed over here. 
So the stirrups are placed exactly where our view is. So since we were viewing at level 1, our stirrups were placed at level 1 over here. So let us play around with the offsets over here. So let's choose the edit constraints over here and move it up to at least uh, 10 centimeters up so that it's inside. Oh, we need a negative sign over here. It's inside the column now. And we can adjust the spacing here. You can choose a fixed number. So with maximum spacing over here, Revit will space out your ties according to the spacing that you've keyed in over here. Number of spacing is quite self-explanatory, so you can key in 10, and let's say key in a distance of 100 millimeters here, and so on and so forth, and minimum clear spacing. It's best to look at it in the elevation view. So let's make this visible over here. So with minimum clear spacing of 100 millimeters, let's make this fine and make this 125 so it's easier to see. So in the middle over here, to the middle, your minimum spacing is exceeding the 100 millimeter spacing over here. So that's what minimum clear spacing does so essentially you will set a minimum threshold over here and Revit will try to figure it out in terms of how to space it accordingly and that's about it really so let's view all the rebar and okay, it's all visible over here so we can do a number of spacing and do 10 centimeters here, sorry. Like so, and add it all the way up to 30 because this column is about 3 meters tall. Like so, and do the same here. And now let's draw in the bend at the base of the column here that will connect to the pile cap or pad footing so let's select one of these pieces of vertical rebar over here proceed to a uh, elevation view and make this visible so let's select one of them and drag it down over here Make this, let's say, three and a half meters over here. Oops. And what you can do is just simply choose a 90 degree hook at the start. Like so. If you want to change the orientation of the bend, just hit the space bar until it is facing the direction that you like. Or the direction that you prefer for your design. And... I'll just quickly delete the rest and just copy and paste that one piece of rebar. So that way I don't have to repeat it individually. Go back to level 1. I'll just copy it, paste. I'll hold up, I'll just mirror this. And... Mirror this over here as well, like so, and then I will copy this down over here. Okay, it's only rotating by 90 degrees, so let's try 45 over here. There we go. And rotate this like this. And let's copy this out, move it by 150, like so, and mirror this over here. And you 
can perhaps rotate it like this over here and this one like this or you could make this slightly shorter so it does not clash with this one over here and one last tip for this video for your ties you don't have to show every single one over here you can just choose the presentation option that you prefer you can choose to show it only in the middle over here or at the start and ends only or you can select the ones that you want to show for example and that's it for today's Autodesk Revit tutorial. If you found it useful, like this tutorial, share this tutorial, and subscribe for more Autodesk Revit tutorials like this. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.